With the new school year just around the corner and a possibility that we might be doing the first semester virtually, I've been looking at ways in which I can engage and build relationships with my students virtually or even through a blended learning space. Now the first day of school is super important to kind of establish those expectations, rules, regulations, and also to build an initial rapport with our students. And since there's a possibility that I might not meet my students face to face this year, I decided to create a back to school stations interactive online activity that the students can go through um, to learn more about my course, but also for me to learn more about them. <laughs> Now, as the students go through the virtual activity, it's going to look something like this. Um, the students are gonna click on each station and it will take them to different tasks that they have to complete under each one of the stations. Some of these activities are gonna cover the coursework logistics, so introduce the students to the syllabus of the course, but also any other information. Other activities are going to be more like team building or um, helping you build relationships with your students, helping you getting um, to know them better. Now I have included a copy of the template that I just showed you in the description box below, um, but I'm also going to be taking you through a step-by-step -step tutorial of how you can create something like this activity from scratch. For today's tutorial, I will be using the template that I've already created on Canva. Now, you're welcome to use this template and I'm going to be providing it in the description box below. However, if you'd like to create everything from scratch on Google Slides, then that is your call as well. Um, to begin with, I like to have a sort of title page just to introduce the students to the activity and to kind of welcome them to my course or my subject area. And then the next slide, I decided to dedicate it to um, myself just so the students get to know me a little bit better. So it's all about me. Um, you can uh, basically include some facts about you, um, how long you've been teaching, perhaps your educational background, your hobbies, your likes, your activities, etc. Um, I also decided to include a Bitmoji of myself, as you can see here, and um, in order to get a Bitmoji, um, all you have to do is download the Bitmoji add-on, which is available on Google Chrome. And in this add-on, you'll have so many different options in terms of which Bitmoji you want to include. Um, I decided to include this one because it looked like I was sitting on a chair behind a desk. It's like a virtual classroom type thing. The next slide is a homepage where I'm going to be including all of the different stations that I'd like the students to visit. Now, in a physical classroom, you'd have the stations set up in your, in your classroom space and the students would go through each one and complete the activities. But since we're doing this digitally, um, we're going to include kind of like a overview of all the stations that the students are going to go through in this main homepage slide. In order to add my station headers, I'm going to go up here and click on shapes and I'm going to choose one of these shapes. Um, I'm going to choose the triangle and I have, like I mentioned, four different stations. Again, you can have as many as you'd like for this activity. You're just going to have to create a box per station that you do add. In each box, I'm going to include the station name, so station one. And I'm going to go ahead and center it. I'm going to push, so I'm going to go to align. I'm going to push the text to the top and I'm going to change the font. Now under each station, I'm going to include the name of the activity. So for my first station, I decided to include the agreements. And um, so I'm going to introduce the students to the rules, the expectation, the agreements. And again, since um, this classroom is going to be run virtually, the agreements, rules, expectations might differ slightly than um, your physical classroom expectations. So for station number two, I'm going to be doing a personal profile or kind of like a student survey. Um, and what I do is I give the students a quiz. It's a personality prototype quiz and it kind of helps me. I understand my students better, uh, understand their personality prototypes and get an idea if they're introverted, extroverted, get an idea of what type of learners they are. Are they a visual learner? Are they um, like an aesthetic learner, etc. And I'm able to kind of gather this data and understand the percentages of each type of learner that exist in my classrooms. And that way, when I'm choosing my activities and I'm, I'm choosing the type of things that I want to introduce in my class, 
I can make sure that I'm um, targeting or I'm able to accommodate as many uh, diverse learners as possible. I'm going to be dedicating station number three for an icebreaker activity and I'm going to be doing this using Flipgrid. Um, the prompt that the students are going to get is that they need to do a two truths and a lie um, activity but instead of since we're not able to do this in a physical classroom they're going to record themselves um, basically going through their two truths and a lie and they're going to post it on the Flipgrid page. Flipgrid also allows the students to take a selfie or upload an image of themselves. And that way I can remember or learn their names much faster. Station four will be the course syllabus. And here I will be putting information about my course. I'll be putting information about the grade breakdown, etc. So I've completed the directions for the overall activity. And the next thing we wanna do is create a slide for each one of the stations. Again, I have a pre-existing template ready and if you are going to be using the template, the only thing you wanna do is add a number next to the word station to indicate which one you are dealing with. All right, so I'm gonna be duplicating the slide so that it pertains to the number of stations that I had in the homepage. I have four stations, so I'm gonna duplicate this so that I have four slides. And all I have to do now is change this number so that it um, pertains to the station number. Okay, and as you can see, I have slides for stations one, two, three, and four. Next, what we're gonna be doing is we are going to link the slides with the stations that we've provided on the home page. In order to do that, I'm going to click on the box. So the box that you've added, or you can click on the word station one. It really depends on how you uh, want it to look like when it's in present mode. I would like them to click on the entire box itself. And once you click on the um, object that you want linked, you're going to either click insert link or you can right click um, and scroll down until you see link uh, down here. And I'm going to link it to slides in this presentation and basically slide number four because slide number four is the slide pertaining to station number one. So slide number four, apply, and I'm gonna do the same for the other stations. All right, now that all the slides are linked to these station um, graphics, I'm going to test it out. So we're gonna go on to present mode. And if we click on station one, it should take us to the slide that deals with station one. Um, now the next thing we wanna add, uh, which will be helpful for the students, is we wanna add a home button so that when they're done with one station, they can go back to that home page and work on the next station. Um, now I've already included that in the template. This little icon here can be my home button, but if you're, if you're um, doing this from scratch, you would just use one of these shapes to create your home um, button. So I'm gonna go ahead and write the word home. Okay, and next we want to link. Um, so I'm gonna link the word home back to the home page, which happens to be on slide number three. Now, since we do want a home button on all of our um, station slides, I'm just gonna copy, paste. Okay, and I'm doing so let's test it out again. Um, so I'm gonna go back to the home page and click on present. And if I click on the first station, station number one, it should take me to station number one where I will add the activity that is dealing with station number one as well as the directions. And then I'm gonna click on home, which should take me back to the home page where I can now work on station number two and so on and so forth. And once your students are finished going through all the different stations, that will be it, they're done. Um, now the nice thing about this is all of the activities that are under each different station are going to be linked to other things such as Google Forms, um, I'm using Flipgrid, you can add things like an, a Google document. So students aren't really doing anything on this Google slide itself. If you want them to do that, you are you can definitely do that. You can have them kind of um, answer prompts directly on the slides. But for me, I'm gonna have um, the activities linked to external uh, resources, external Google Forms, um, maybe other Google Slides, a Google Doc, Flipgrid, other websites, etc. They're not really submitting anything on this presentation. This presentation will be view only, meaning that they can they will just 
um, get a copy of this it will look like this and they will uh, once they once they go through the first two slides they're gonna um, go to the home page slide where, where it will say that they have to be on present mode and then once they're on present mode they will basically go through the different activities and click on the external links that I will add here um, and then complete the activities in the external links. I hope that was clear and I hope it was helpful and I really hope that this makes it easier for you guys to get to know your students better, to um, introduce your expectations and your classroom roles and even information about your classroom even though we are on a digital platform. I just want to say thank you so much for all the support that I've been getting for the past few months, whether it be from the shares or the subscribes. Uh, I finally reached a thousand subscribers, which feels amazing. And I really hope that the videos I'm creating have been helpful. And as usual, if you did like this video, if you did find it helpful, I would appreciate if you could give it a like and recommend it to other fellow educators that might find it useful.